Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on Venus and Adonis. We are going to take a look at stanzas 133 to 136 today and we've reached the point in all of this where the pillow talk is basically ending. She was trying to get him to go for round two and he's like, no, my friends are expecting me and she was like, you know, it's only so dark outside because nature is jealous that you're so beautiful and all this sort of stuff and he cut her off and in yesterday's stanzas he was like, no hush, I'm not doing this, this is, and he, he actually got much wordier than he had been previously. And in stanza 133, he continues on saying, call it not love, for love to heaven is fled, since sweating lust on earth usurped his name, under whose simple semblance he hath fed upon fresh beauty, blotting it with blame, which the hot tyrant stains and soon bereaves as caterpillars do the tender leaves. Love comforteth like sunshine after rain, but lust's effect is tempest after sun. Love's gentle spring doth always fresh remain. Lust's winter comes ere summer half be done. Love surfeits not, lust like a glutton dies. Love is all truth, lust full of forged lies. More I could tell, but more I dare not say. The text is old, the orator too green. Therefore, in sadness, now I will away. My face is full of shame, my heart of teen, mine ears that to your wanton talk attended do burn themselves for having so offended. With this, he breaketh from the sweet embrace of those fair arms which bound him to her breast, and homeward through the dark lawn runs apace, leaves love upon her back deeply distressed. Look how a bright star shooteth from the sky, so glides he in the night from Venus' eye. So these first three stanzas are him continuing on saying, saying no to her. He, he's like, this is not love that we're experiencing in here. This is lust, and that's kind of gross. I don't want to be a part of that. He spends one of the stanzas talking about the differences between love and lust. You know, love is this this wonderful, beautiful thing that rejuvenates and and brings new life, and it's, it's truth and all these sorts of things, whereas lust is not. It takes from, and it is full of lies and, and all that. And then he stops himself, and he's like, you know, I could go on, but I shouldn't, because this is stuff that people know, and I'm too young to have actually experienced any of it. So I'm the wrong person to be talking about this. Therefore, I'm going to go do my walk of shame right now, and I'm going to get out of here. So he, he leaves it on the note of that was a massive mistake that just happened, and it's not going to happen again. And he rests himself free of her arms in the last stanza is the narrator talking again. He gets up and he it equates him to a shooting star. He, he just sort of glides away from her in the dark. But knowing what we know about Venus and knowing that we have about two weeks to go left before we're done with this, po with this poem, do you think that she just lets him go? I don't know. We'll find out in tomorrow's stanzas. Mwah.